Hello and welcome back to my channel and this video where I'm going to show you my coloring essentials. So here's where I mostly sit and color. Uh, I have a cozy chair too in the living room but uh, now I have most of my coloring supplies and books here uh, so I mostly sit here. Uh, in some video I'm going to show you all of my supplies I think if that is something you would like to see but for now let's concentrate on my essentials okie dokie so uh, one of my essentials are this thing maybe a bit boring to show but because it's just a white copy paper, but I really, really need copy papers when I color. Uh, and they are so versatile. I use them for sometimes when I remember to protect the page from smudging with my hand. I use them when I remember to, to put them between pages. Uh, let's see if I can find a book as well. You know, if I'm gonna color this picture, I put a protection paper back here, so I will not, when if I press too hard uh, or the, yeah, sometimes the ink can like, can be pressed onto the next page. Uh, and mostly you can just erase that, but still, it's good with the protection paper. And if you're going to use uh, soft pastels or watercolors or other things, it's very good to protect because otherwise it can, yeah, come, come to the other side. Uh, I also sometimes use protection papers between pages I have finished. Not that often. Uh, when I have used soft pastels, I spray them with fixative. Uh, but sometimes other pages too can smudge. But so, so sometimes I do like this, put a pa paper behind between the pages uh, when I close the book. And let me see. Yeah, and of course, uh, I also use my my white paper to try out color combos with or just see I mean I uh, I have a swatch book but it's still nice to see uh, yeah to try it just before you start using them and see try out color combos so that's good and also it's good if you use Posca uh, because sometimes I mean Posca pen you need to shake it and then you have to press it up and down and then you need a paper uh, because sometimes it's fluting it's come it will come a lot of posca out from the pen this is almost dry out so this uh, <laughs> it won't happen with this one but you uh, i have done it sometimes on the coloring pages and that was a huge mistake so that is also good for uh, uh to have these kind of papers too and also, when you use water, uh, you can, of course, use a paper towel or something, uh, a Kleenex. But uh, I'm because I always have these kind of papers around me, I think they are good for, like, if you have, I'm going to see if I can press out some water from this. If you have, like, a pen pencil or a brush, brush, I mean, sorry, is this a word, pencil, that means... Uh, brush in Swedish it's so confusing sorry 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 yeah if you have a brush regular brush with water or a water brush and you gonna you want to just press out some water or clean it between you use it between different colors and so on it's very good to have a protection sheet or have a paper that you can use for that and uh, yeah I use it also for one more thing uh, but I think I'm going to come back to that because that is actually connected with another of my essentials. So I hope I will remember that. Uh, so yes, as I told you, I also have my swatch book. Uh, and uh, it's just a regular A5 uh, cheap book, which I have done to my swatch book. So here is my Caran Luminance Skin Tone Set, which I bought 
uh, when I saw Reka, my friend, coloring friend Reka Colors on Instagram. Uh, she had bought it and she had done this kind of uh, swatch page on in her book. And I thought it looked so good, so I did a similar. Uh, my other sets look like this. They have a small a page with small squares and they have big squares. Uh, at least some of them I started to do that but it took a lot of time so I have yeah I have a bit smaller ones for my watercolor pencils and new colors and stuff but and my new like Black Widows I just have these I don't gonna do bigger squares for them but still I think this is a really good book I often op open it up and stare in it and look if I look for a specific shade uh, or want to see, okay, I want two blues that goes well together. Okay, I might try. Oh, that is a, I like number 79, uh, which is Periwinkle. And that I think will go well together with 80, which is Cloud Blue. And maybe I need a darker shade. Mm -hmm -hmm. I think it will go together good with maybe 83, which is indigo blue. And then I can pick them out and try it on my piece of scrap paper and see if they actually look good together. Yeah, so I use this quite a lot. Uh, And now there are my essentials. It's my pencil uh, uh, sharpener. Uh, my first favorite was Tigal, uh, a small one which you can where you can change if you want how long edge you want. Uh, but lately I've had problem with that one, so I bought this. Uh, this is the Stettler's table sharpener. And I have had some problems with them, with it, but not much. And I think it works very well for all my pencils, even the Prismacolors. They got a very sharp edge, but it doesn't break like this. Uh, it's going to be even more sharp, sharpened when it's... Yeah, I can show you. So when I started, I didn't use so sharp edges, but now I prefer them very sharp. So I know there are other ones like Dervant Super Point that people like. I have not tried that, so I can't compare. Uh, but I think this work for my for me. And uh, another essential I have is my erasers. Uh, and I think I need all the three of these. <laughs> it's my battery one, uh, which is very. It's not that big and it's good because it's uh, it has a it takes it away a lot of color uh, with it when you use it so i really like this one i also like this uh, that I, oops that my friend marie mia remakes told me about this mono zero uh, which is really tiny and uh, they are good it's good for smaller more precision erasing and of course, just a regular eraser for bigger areas like backgrounds or soft pastels and things like that when you have messed up, which I do a lot because my motto is do mess it up, if you remember. So let's see. Yeah, the erasers, which they work for colored pencils and, uh, and uh, soft pastels. And... I also like to have uh, to never be out of white gel pens and a white Posca pen, the smallest one I think, the PC1M. Uh, now this was dried out, but I mean it's for dots and stars, and uh, I think people all use it for covering lines sometimes. I have not tried that very much, but. Uh, yeah, of course I have done that. Now I say things again that is not true. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I use them for cover lines, but I, mostly I don't uh, use color on top of the white. I just hide the lines. But yeah, I think some people also have done coloring on top of this. Uh, 
so highlights and the same with these. I think these are quite similar. On some pages I think these works the best and some pages this one. Uh, I try to have at least some of them at home so I never is out of them because I think when I found out about white gel pen and white Posca and how they can change a uh, picture, uh, it was such a fantastic moment in my coloring history. It was the first year and it did so much difference. It really made it pop and uh, so they are uh, absolutely my essentials. I also like to have this uh, Vinco Stella clear brush. Uh, I think there are other brands as well. I would like to try out the Spectrum Noir sometime because maybe they are a bit different. But yeah, this is just, I mean, you can't see that maybe, but it's clear glitter. You can put it on top of anything. If you want some sparkle on top of your pencils or felt tip pens or uh, nail color, whatever, just put some sparkle on top with this. So let me see, what do I more have? Yeah, of course. This is actually one of my essentials. It's just this thing you have in your hair to put out your hair. Uh, I was going to film myself today, but my hair is a mess like most of the times. And I have a lot of hair and it's just hanging and it's in the way. And when I lean forward to color, it's always in the way and I hate it. So I need one of these to take the hair away. Uh, yes, and I also like to have a lot of black around, around me. <laughs> I like to have a small black Posca and a bigger one. Now I couldn't find it right now, but I know I have one. Uh, and also a big Pit Artist pen black and a small one, this kind of brush pen. Uh, because they are both good for black backgrounds and uh, because I have this uh, motto to do mess it up don't be afraid of trying and experimenting uh, it's good to have a backup plan I mean sometimes it's just a disaster uh, and now I'm talking about backgrounds because I do like to experiment when it comes to backgrounds and uh, I don't think I would cover the line art uh, the whole picture with black but the background you can almost always do a black background if uh, nothing else works. So I have done a lot of those and I think it's good to have this as a backup plan. They are very close to me here where I sit. And yeah, the brush pen, the water brush. Uh, I haven't used watercolor pencils or watercolor pens or even new color a lot lately, but I do did that a lot earlier and I guess I will do it again. Uh, and this is my this is my favorite, the smallest Dervant's uh, water brush. They have other sizes that I also have, but I don't use them for some reason. I have just get used to this size. I even use it for backgrounds, uh, which is a bit unpractical because it's so small and it takes so lo long time. So I think I need to practice this year with uh, some Dodger brushes or and maybe some regular brushes. Uh, but I really think this, this giveaway is quite little water, which I think is good. So it's more easy to control than some other ones I have tried that give away more water. But then I haven't tried all. I have not tried Pentel, for, ex for example. So... Uh, and not SIGs. Yeah, one of them, but not all of the sizes. So yeah, there are a lot of things I have not tried, but this is my favorite so far. Uh, and I use it for all the watercolor mediums I use. And yeah, the blenders. This is my blenders. Uh, when I use colored pencils uh, and want to blend it, this is the three things I use mostly. This is the Karandash full blender stick. Uh, I prefer this one before the Prismacolor or the Durant blender pens, which I also have. Uh, I mean, this is Prismacolor. I think this is this is quite good. It's good with Prismacolor, but I don't like the sound of it. It's so scrapey. This is more smooth. Uh, I mean, this is a wax stick. Uh, 
and it gives it like melts the colors together and into the paper and uh, now it's a bit purple because I haven't cleaned it off the paper that's also why you have to have uh, always have some white scrap paper next to you so you can clean your your uh, blender sticks and things like that not only brushes uh, yeah so and it gives a bit it waxiness to the page and it can be very smooth and shiny which I quite like uh, but sometimes I also use the cream polychromos cream which is a very nice yellow light pale color which works for a lot of blending as well and I also use you can see these are my shortest pencil pencils for a reason uh, and when I do want to blend with white I mostly use the Prismacolor uh, one now you can't see but the white one it's soft and I think it works very well as blending but then you have to know that of course these adds color this uh, makes the color a bit lighter and these uh, may make it make it a bit yellow this is colorless uh, and sometimes I of course use uh, just a lighter shade of uh, what I am coloring like a light green if I'm coloring a green leaf or something like that like that but these are my go-to these are my essentials when it comes to blending so that was the blending and uh, for shading these three are my favorites it's polychromos all of them it's the black I think I use this least for shading of these three, but still I use it. Uh, and dark sepia, I think that is uh, my favorite shading pencil. And dark indigo. And sometimes I use dark gray or dark purple or other colors, but these are my essentials when it comes to shading. And another of my essential is my whip boxes. Uh, when I color, it's kind of messy. I like to have all the pencils around me that I have selected for that project and I take out new pencils all the time. And as long as I'm doing that page, I don't want to put them back in the cases. Uh, so I have a lot of different whip cups. It can be like anything. Now I found one of these Ben and & Jerry's. <laughs> and... Uh, May cleaned it and it works just fine. Maybe I will do it, put some nice paper on it or something, make it look better. But right now this works for me and I can have different things. I have also a lot of these kind of boxes. I bought a set of boxes uh, and yeah, I have the smallest ones of these are my whip things. I can't remember what whip this was. Yeah, I think it was, it is what a mandala I did and something more. And I have not put this back yet, so it's in this box. And I also have this clear. Uh, I have a mini drawer with five drawers. Uh, right now it's uh, next to my chair in the living room. So I have not used it that much because now I'm sitting here. But when I sit there, it's very practical. I just put my whip pencils here and uh, close the drawer and I can still see because it's uh, see see through and clear so I can see what's inside so I like that and another one that I bought on some yeah this thing I bought on some second hand place I think for a long time ago and I found it <laughs> the other day so uh, I took it out and thought yeah this was a really good whip thing why have I not used this for a long time uh, so now I'm using this, but it can be anything, but it, it, the essential is not the thing, but it has to be able to have my whip pencils and pens in. And uh, I wonder, yeah, maybe there's just one more thing that is my essential. No, of course, uh, the camera, uh, the phone. I can't actually show you it because I'm filming with it, but 
that has always been one of my favorite tools when it comes to coloring since I started. I use it for a lot of things. I use it for inspiration, of course. When I uh, when I'm on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or yeah other places and find inspiration for a specific page or for yeah for my coloring and color combinations and things like that or when I have to google up a reference photo for a specific animal maybe or something uh, so I use it a lot and I also use it for of course taking photos and I don't I don't mean just the photos which I up upload to you. I actually take a lot of photos during the process uh, on my whips. And uh, sometimes they are useful and sometimes not. But what I have noticed and what why I use it so much is that when I take a picture of my <laughs> picture uh, and look at it on my phone, like a photo, not, not in the real world, I can see it more objective. Uh, and also if I just I can also look at it just in the phone and it makes uh, me see it more from a distance and make me be more objective about it so that's how I see when are you finished picture or are you, are you not finished I can't I have a hard time to see that just looking at my picture that is in front of me that's strange I know but when I take a photo of it and look on that photo in my phone I can zoom in and I can think about it and it's it's something about that that uh, I don't know it just makes me uh, helps me a lot when I color. So the last thing on my essentials is this black box. It's made of paper and I think it had some knives or something in it some Christmas ago. My husband got a present from his work uh, but it I really liked it because you can have things inside it and uh, it is a magnet that closes it so I did this uh, oh now it's so broken but I did this some years ago <laughs> creativity it says in Swedish uh, but mostly I use the back of it I use it for storing but also for taking photos so when I have finished the picture I let me see if I can find one picture. Let us take this flower power. Uh, I put it on this black background, this box, and I put it up in the window. And usually I close the lamps so it's just gonna have the lights from the outside. And now I'm gonna use the white paper again because I'm gonna do what Reka color learned me once upon a time that you can use a white paper to reflect the light from the outside so uh, when I take the picture it will not be much more lighter here and darker here but more even and then I take my picture against this black background so these are my essentials when it comes to coloring what are your essentials Please comment below or maybe you will do your own video and talk about it if you have a channel. See you later. Goodbye.